In the bustle of daily life in Boulder, Colorado, there is a refuge, a quiet spot that reminds us to slow down, to wonder at the beauty that surrounds us, to give our full attention for a while to the company of friends and the simple pleasures of food and drink and conversation. This is our Chaihana, our tea house, a unique gift from our sister city of Dushanbe, Tajikistan, in the high mountains between Afghanistan and Uzbekistan on the far side of the world. In the 1980s, amid the bitter dregs of the Cold War, a group of Boulder citizens decided it was time to stop the rhetoric and find a human connection. They succeeded. A sister cities match was made, and in 1987, we exchanged a pledge of eternal friendship with the people who had been labeled for so long as the enemy. To celebrate the relationship, Dushanbe Mayor Maksud Ikramov promised a gift to the city of Boulder one of the finest representations of the Persian culture of the region, a tea house. For hundreds of years, the people of the harsh region that would become Tajikistan have found rest and comfort and community in tea houses serving green tea and flatbread hot from the clay tandir ovens. They talked over the news of the world or the gossip of the neighborhood or thrilled to the adventurous tales of itinerant storytellers. Today, in a Tajikistan struggling to find peace with itself since the disintegration of the Soviet Union, tea houses are still the living heart of the community, offering another sort of refuge. Here, peace, friendship, and conversation are found among the scent of roses and of tea. Because it is a gift, our tea house is more ornate than most, but it grew from the same roots. Beams sawed and carved by hand, brought to life with bright paint and complemented by ceramic panels rich with symbolism. For decades, such ethnic expressions were smothered by the pervasive Soviet realism. However, with the softening influence of Glasnost came a revival. The Soviet government gave its blessing to the project, allowing artists to acquire the rich materials for their creation. There is little hardwood growing in Tajikistan, no native tree is strong enough to support the brilliant sky of the Chakana. Cedar, which grows in the Yoblanovi mountain range in Siberia, was reserved for the Soviet military. Ironically, the 14 columns that support this symbol of peace and friendship could be acquired only after officials declared a military necessity. Tajik artists traveled almost 2,000 miles to the mountains near sacred Lake Bikal to select live trees for the carving. Master woodcarvers Manan Haidarov and Mir Palat Mirachmatov, inseparable friends who became affectionately known as M&M &M to their Boulder friends, designed the carvings. Manan and Mir Palat began their work when they were children, carving scraps of wood at home with their siblings and then following to watch their fathers as they worked. Later they apprenticed themselves to experienced woodcarvers. Now in their 60s, the friends have worked together for decades and are themselves the revered teachers. Mir Palat has passed the craft on to his son, who also worked on our tea house. When the ceiling carving was done, it was the turn of the painters. Vividly tinted oil paints were ordered from Leningrad, mixed from clay instead of chemicals to respect the wood. The painting reflects the Islamic culture of the region elements from nature, repeated patterns, abstract forms, lavish color and elaborate decoration. There is simple meaning in each design and color. A stork represents kindness and peace. Peacocks with their beautiful tail spread are an invitation to enter and appreciate the beauty of the Chakana. Vines curl and intertwine, a connection that cannot be unraveled. Gaunch is the Russian word for plaster. Tajik painter Abu Qadir Rakimov, internationally known for his oil paintings, also taught himself, through research and patience, the rare specialty of carving gaunch. In 
In addition to the delicate plaster panels, the tea house walls are enriched by his bold paintings, a Tajik take on abstract expressionism. The ceramic panels that brighten the exterior of the tea house are primarily the painstaking work of one artist, Viktor Zabalatnikov, who spent more than a year on the task. Beginning with a ton of rough clay, he molded panels populated with stylized birds and plants from Dushanbe, partridges and gold-tailed pheasants, gladiola and ruby pomegranates. Their brilliant colors emerge from the complex chemistry of glazes with copper and chromium ground by hand. The firing of the glaze at nearly a thousand degrees Celsius had to be done at night because of power shortages. For 35 nights, Victor slept in his studio to babysit the delicate panels. Meanwhile, other artists were busy creating the traditional topchons, the elaborately painted tables and stools, the sculpture, the cushions, and the tea cozies to fill our tea house with comfort. As the tea house was created in Tajikistan, bolder citizens were searching for the site that would be an appropriate setting for the jewel-like Chahana. Dushanbe architect Lado Shanitse created the original architectural drawings of the tea house. Sadly, he died before the project was completed and never saw the tea house in the setting he envisioned. Bolder architect Vern Syro carried on the work, creating an annex to house modern facilities without distracting from the tea house. Sister City's president, Mary Axe, encouraged and cajoled the process along. For eight years, Boulder resident Rosemary McBride sweltered in a coat purchased on a visit to the Silk Road, a visible reminder around town that the tea house awaited a home. We finally found it, next to murmuring water overlooking the shifting diorama of our farmer's market and the green oasis of Central Park. In the fall of 1997, construction began. Local workers assembling the pieces of the 2100 square foot puzzle had the help of visiting Tajik artists. Blue jeans and hard hats met loose trousers and embroidered caps. Strong tea bubbled atop a gleaming samovar on the construction site. Boulder gardeners planted roses and other greenery to please outdoor diners and chess players. A bicycle path, designed by local artist April Lisa Snyder, routed past the tea house, was embossed with leaves and the poetry of Persian poet Omar Khayyam, in English for those heading east, and in Farsi for travelers going west. Finally, on May 15, 1998, we were able to step for the first time into the Fabergé egg interior of our tea house and realize the magnitude of the gift, a million dollar work of art, the largest gift ever presented to the United States by the former Soviet Union. Visitors come to Boulder for many reasons. Breath-stopping mountain panoramas, world-class athletic competition, the jazzy excitement of the downtown mall on a Saturday night. Now, there is one more reason, the chance to step inside a work of art that is unique in the Western world. You've got to see the tea house, is now standard advice to every newcomer. But the greatest impact is on ourselves how we view our community and what we know of the bigger world. We thought we knew about color, the deep green of a pine-covered slope, the crystal blue of an icy lake, the red rocks that gave our state its name. But when we stepped inside the jewel box of our tea house, we learned a whole new palette, 
the brilliant plumage of singing birds, flowers the color of an impossible sunset, scarlets and teals to stimulate the mind and soothe the soul. We thought our mountains had taught us about patience and strength until we watched the thick, skilled fingers of the artists as they shaped hardwood into delicate traceries with simple hand tools. We thought we knew about generosity, we who are ungrudging about helping those less fortunate, until from one of the lesser developed countries of the world, we received a glowing gift we can only repay with our enjoyment.